What's up, everyone? I pulled my back out a little bit, so just, like, give me a minute. <laughs> this is what I get for trying to be goofy and dramatic. <laughs> I'll be alright, don't worry about it. Alrighty. Uh, the reason that I am here with all of you on this glorious cloudy morning is that I have a little bit of a gripe and then maybe a solution, we'll see. I wanna recap really quickly some of the things that I have learned about watercolor in my introduction to them and my use of them over the past three months because I feel like I've hit sort of like a milestone slash tipping point. Oh God, my hair. <laughs> If I'm vain about anything, it's my hair. <laughs> okay, that's better. Um, so I just wanted to clarify some things that I have learned. Some, I would say, maybe not universal, but widely accepted, majority accepted rules of watercolor that I had to kind of learn both the hard way and through some of my subsequent research after I hit some roadblocks. Mainly what I want to talk about is watercolor paper, but I would say that there are also some things regarding the paints that you're using and the brushes that you're using, and I'm just going to get that out of the way first. So I don't know about you guys, but I just work with whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that there's an art supply out there in the entire world that's entirely useless. It really depends on what the desired effect and the end result that you're going for is. And if you can achieve that using like incredibly inexpensive art supplies, then more power to you. When I started painting with acrylic as a for instance, I used those cheap bottles that you can get for like 99 cents a piece at Michael's or other craft stores that are mainly used for like crafting projects, so you know, painting furniture and sorts of other things like that. They're not intended on being put on canvas long term. They definitely have zero light fastness information. They often dry a little bit more opaque because that's not what they're used for. But when I began, I began on a budget and I also began not even knowing if this was something that I wanted to pursue full time until I found out that I loved it. So why would you blow all of your money on the most wildly expensive paints in the world? And I've always been economical in that way and I approached watercolor in very much the same way. I got a fairly inexpensive watercolor sketchbook that I thought would fit my needs. I got an incredibly affordable set of synthetic hair brushes off of Amazon that I still enjoy using three months in. And I started shopping around for some budget paints that I thought came well recommended. I would say the paints are where I did my most research prior to jumping in, but the pitfall that I ran into and where I'm still struggling to this day is with the watercolor paper that I'm using. So you might recognize this. This is my Moleskine watercolor sketchbook, the book that I bought right when I was beginning using watercolors. I was really interested in buying this book for several reasons. One is a superficial reason, and that is because I've always wanted a Moleskine book. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for the hard covers. I'm a sucker for books that have pockets in the back cover. I'm a sucker for marketing. <laughs> and that makes me a fool. But I didn't really realize how much I was going to end up fighting the paper inside of this book. It comes with so many issues that I didn't even know were going to bother me before I began. And granted, you know, that's just a drawback of being a beginner. You know what I mean? Like, if you're in the same place that I was, having zero knowledge whatsoever, as in you don't even know what to research yet, <laughs> then buying just whatever you can afford or whatever you want, and you know, this sketchbook wasn't the cheapest, but I didn't think it was unreasonably expensive either compared to what I thought I was getting. There's, I think, 72 workable pages, so like front and back in this little book and I thought that was great because a lot of some of the other watercolor sketchbooks I was seeing had only like 40 pages. I thought that I was getting a good deal. But <laughs> the reason why I believe you get so many pages in this is because look at that. The paper is so thin and it warps so much when you're painting on it 
They call it 300 GSM paper. I, at this point in time, no longer believe them. I don't think that it's 300 GSM. <laughs> it's also 25% uh, cotton paper, which did not turn me off from the beginning because, again, I was trying to be economical, but there are some issues that I've had in using the paper in this book that I ended up putting my foot down and actually testing, putting like actual test swatches in the back of this book to see how well it performed. And unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that I noticed about this were things that I picked up during my painting processes um, in the previous three months. You know, this is just spelling it out for you right here based on all of these little tests that I did. You can get unfortunate cauliflowers, I guess these are called. You, the, your colors don't really blend well together if you're using super wet washes. Um, I have issues with how this paper glazes. Like if you put one color over another, it just gets like super splotchy and uneven. If you try to soften your colors, there's like a hard edge around your most diluted wash at the end. So you can't totally fade it to white, which is so much a bummer. There's just all of these problems. <laughs> one of the problems that I found when using gouache in this book is actually an enormous pain in the butt. And that is, say you have a gouache painting on one of your previous pages and you use super wet washes like I did on this portrait here of my boyfriend. I used a big wet wash in the background so that I could do just this really soft color and it will leak through the paper, moisten this side, and reactivate your gouache over on this side, which is so frustrating. I scrubbed away as many blue stains from this beautiful watercolor piece I did of my kitchen window because it very nearly ruined it. You can actually see a splotch of it right there and oh God, that's irritating in the extreme. <laughs> and then there's also structural issues with this book that I'm finding really frustrating. Because the pages get so wrinkly after you finish painting on them, the book gets fat. And because the book gets fat, it compromises the spine. And when the spine gets compromised, you find that your pages start wiggling in the signatures and I'm so scared that they're just gonna fall out. <sighs> so that brings me to something that I have learned, sort of a universal truth of how you learn watercolors and what you should really be looking for in terms of getting the most for your money. And that is cheap watercolor brushes may do you all right. Cheap watercolor paint, you can find some good quality ones out there. Cheap watercolor paper will nearly always be a disappointment to you unless you know what you're looking for. Now, I don't plan on ditching this sketchbook. I think I've made really good use of it so far. It's definitely good for like playtime. Um, I want to finish a sketchbook at some point for the first time in my life, so I don't plan on throwing this away. Not to mention, I just don't want to get rid of any of the finished artworks that are actually in this book because I think I've managed to be somewhat ingenious despite some of the roadblocks and hurdles that I needed to overcome, but fortunately for me, I have very generous friends. I was having a discussion with a friend of mine recently. She's actually the person that I would say inspired me the most to get into watercolor because I know her personally. I've seen some of her artwork and I think that she's lovely. When I saw what she was doing with her watercolors, it inspired me to take up the medium as well after years of feeling like I was too scared to try it. So I have to thank Maria for not only being an inspiration to me, but just being very open with me about the knowledge that I needed and the resources that I could turn to when it came to learning watercolors and basically what I needed to know and deals I could get too. The girls got really good scoop <laughs> on some good art supply deals and I'll, I'll always be a fan of that. So anyhow, she and I were discussing this problem that I was having and she very generously offered to send me a crap ton of samples of watercolor papers for me to try. I pulled all these out and looked at them uh, at one point already, but I just have to say that like I kind of lost count of how many. So she sent me in the mail, uh, it was two plastic sleeves like this. Here's the other one. And there's one of each of a type of paper for me to experiment with. I'm just gonna pull them all out real quick. Just like look. Look at this stack. 
<laughs> like the generosity. I'm, I'm so blessed to know the people that I know and be friends with them because they really look out for you when you're, you know, trying a creative pursuit. They respect and encourage your own creative pursuits. So we have so many. Should I ramble them off? Daler and Rowney cold press 300 GSM 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is uh, Etcher UABS. I think that says 50% cotton 300 GSM cold press paper. Paul Rubens, 140 pound, yeah, 300 GSM cold press paper. Boom, Paul Rubens. Stonehenge Aqua, 300 GSM cold press paper. Canson, uh, Moulin du Roy, 300 GSM rough paper. Very textured, that's pretty cool. Uh, this little one is Fluid, 100% cotton. This is also 300 GSM cold press paper. For cold press, this is actually I would say relatively smoother than I'm used to. Fabriano Artistico 300 GSM cold press paper. The Fabled Arches hot press 300 GSM paper. Arches cold press and Arches rough. One of each of those. Um, a paper that I am familiar with through some art YouTubers, B paper, which is always 100% cotton. Um, this is a 300 GSM cold press paper. I think every sheet of paper that I'm going to show to you is 300 GSM, so I'll just probably stop saying that. <laughs> um, this is Fabriano Studio. This is 25% cotton cold press paper. Boom. Uh, Art and Fly. This is 100% cotton cold press paper. And then finally we have Arteza 100% cotton cold press paper. So that is a very generous stack of paper that I can work with, experiment on, and some of these are even so big that I could cut them in half and do multiple paintings on them if I wanted to. I could do like experimental swatches on a part of it, like a sliver of it, the way that I did inside of my uh, Moleskian book there. I'm just, I'm, I'm so impressed by how many types of watercolor paper there are out there in the world. That's uh, astonishing and it makes me a little overwhelmed with the amount of choice that I have, but, you know, I, I have so much to play with and experiment on. So, Maria, if you're watching this, I appreciate you. You're a real one. Thank you for this incredible pile of treasure here for me to play with. <laughs> it's going to help me so that when I eventually move on and make a decision of what kind of watercolor paper or watercolor sketchbook, considering, that I'm going to turn to next. I will at least have firsthand experience because as much as I love doing my research online and on YouTube, which is where I do, I would say, most of my research for watercolor, um, until you have firsthand experience and play with it yourself and experiment on it yourself, you're not gonna understand how it's the most beneficial for you. I'm not going to understand, based on the kind of paintings that I like to do, how these papers are going to benefit me, if at all. So I appreciate this, Maria. I really do. I think that this will be something that I revisit in a future video, but I really just wanted to jump on YouTube real quick and give you guys the skinny on how I was feeling about this because that rule of thumb that you can be as economical as possible with your paints and your brushes, but what you want is damn good paper because you'll end up being like me. <laughs> <laughs> and being frustrated because you're getting really hard outlines on very diluted washes and that's unsightly and you can't blend properly and when you want to do multiple layers you overwork your paper and ah <laughs> damn you moleskin first of all for being dumb and telling me that this is 300 gsm paper i just want to like just to pour a little extra salt on moleskin real quick just Let's actually compare it to a, a piece that I haven't even worked on. Can you see that? Do you see how thin that is? I mean, not that it's bad, but it's just not as thick as this. Like, all of these are 300 GSM. They're all relatively the same thickness. And you can hear the difference in the sound. Where's the other smaller one? We're gonna go for it. We're just gonna drag it. Should we do bee peeper? got some good baritone to it. Chirps like a sparrow. <laughs> it bothers me so much. <laughs> you liars. And the thing is, I don't, God, I need to like stop being 
so obnoxious about it, honestly. Like, I don't want to crap on it too much because say you're out there and you have one of these sketchbooks and you love it and it's the best thing ever and blah, blah, blah. More power to you, like I said. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to yuck somebody's yum, but this just ain't my yum. You know what I mean? I hope you, that you can at least understand that. And I definitely don't regret buying this sketchbook because I do still plan on making use of it and what I've put inside it so far, I think, has given me a lot of learning experience. Not just with the type of paper that I'm using, but just with how I perform with watercolors and with gouache because I've been doing so many gouache pieces in here that I'm so very proud of. I mean, you guys just saw this one the other day and I love my disco docs. Like, I mean, I'm proud of me. I'm dissatisfied with the product. That's the clarification. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now and let you get on with your days. I know that I said I was gonna stop doing midweek videos, but you know what? It's my channel and I control it. And this week I just felt like going on a little baby rant. So if you're here and you're listening, I appreciate you as always. I'll see you on Saturday. Until then, ciao.